Hello, my beauties. Uh, is that because that they can hear food? They've seen the keepers now, haven't they? So they recognise Tracy very well because she's uh, been working here for a really oh, long time. Oh, they're beautiful animals, they are. And um, Meg also is on carnivals today, so they'll recognise her as well. You've got such um, a cool How dangerous are they to cuddle? Very dangerous to cuddle. Oh, I'm so glad that? you asked me that question because they are very aggressive. They, they, they love their heat, they love their warmth, and they have to utilise their warmth throughout the, the cold seasons or the cold moments so they will in on a sunny day sunbathe they will utilize it they'll actually use their bellies as a solar panel and, oh, and then they can hold on to that heat while they're under the ground in the evening time yeah. in Africa because actually in Africa in the Kalahari desert or Namibia, the Namibian desert which is where many of them come from it gets freezing cold you know out in Botswana desert cold they call that so they do need to warm up they do need to utilize some of the heat they've acquired in the daytime so they're like little yeah they're like little superheroes really so they have other superpowers um, they're completely immune to some venom of snakes and they can they've learned and they pass it on through generations how to tackle a scorpion so deep they can attach the yeah. stinger throw yeah. it away or discard it wrap yeah. them roll them in the sand to you know mr rat and brush shows a bit of that <laughs> yeah yeah but it is, of course, near cats, I should say. It is, of course, their lunchtime, so they are patiently waiting oh. for a bit of food. Now, what we've got today, because these guys are omnivorous, we have a, a nice, healthy meal for them. So we've got their vegetables here. A bit of veggie for these guys for a mid-morning snack, and they will get a little bit of food later on as well. Uh, but what I'm going to do, because it's quite a small audience today, I'm going to offer some of you guys a chance to throw in some food for the mere cats. Now, I know Callie's keen. Callie's my uh, Rambles with a Ranger morning <laughs> friend. So uh, we're going to start off with Callie. Oh, she's ready in straight away. Lovely. So anybody who's going to have key. a little handful, please Whee! let me know. Hold out your hand and oh. I shall fill it <laughs> with some warm awesome. vegetables. Now, just to let you all know, there hey, is... Hey, 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 share out, sorry. Share it out, There boys. is a little place to wash your hands just behind you. So there's the toilets. There's also yeah. uh, a couple of pumps as That's well. That's so, so awesome. Pumps. And basins. There you go, lovely. Anybody? Anybody who's keen? <laughs> okay, just throw it in at the Do Do try and spread it as far and wide as you can. Make it a little bit more of a foraging experience for these guys. We don't want it, uh, an easy feed. They don't have an easy time in the wild. That is epic. There you go. You're welcome. Anybody else? Would you like to? No. Well, you go on. Well, you love that. Are oh, you enjoying that, aren't you, boys and girls? Oh, you're really yummy, yummy, yummy. Excellent. That's so, so awesome. Get it in, spread it far, spread it wide. And then you want to watch these guys start foraging away. And now what I want you guys to do whilst they're foraging is count the meerkats for me. Does anybody think they can count, can count how many meerkats we've got here in this enclosure? It's a bit of a task, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> they don't stop moving it to the time. There's holes <laughs> everywhere, so they keep popping down those. Uh, and of course they blend in very well. You've said eight over here? Absolutely. Well done. Can get a round of applause over here for this guy. Yay. <laughs> eight meerkats. Well done, sir, because it's quite hard to count all of them <laughs> at dinner time. So excellent. Yeah. Okay, so we've got eight here, quite a few less than what we'd have out there in the wild, I'll be honest. So typically, they will live in group sizes of about 30 to 40, or 20 to 30 on average, but it can reach a lot higher. So these guys, it's all about safety in numbers. The more, the merrier. Uh, and of course, once they uh, have noticed or, or spot a little threat, they will let out an alarm call. That can either be a, a high squeal or a bark, a high-pitched call, and each one will mean something different. So each one relates to a different type of predator or a threat and that lets the other meerkats know exactly where to hide or whether to get up high or down low uh, and so there is a bit of a leader of this mob okay this is a either a matriarchal or a patriarchal society and i'm going to see if we know here in the audience so let's have a bit of a vote so hands up then if you think that it is boys that rule the world uh -oh. and it's a patriarchal society so hand up if you think it's all about the boys oh wow well, this well-trained audience all of you nodding it now okay then hands up in the air if you think this is a female dominated society and it's girls that rule the world Absolutely. <laughs> it's girls. 
girls. <laughs> and it's all about well, the do. alpha female here. So at the moment, we do have uh, quite a large yummy, yummy in food, charge though. of the rest of them. She's our alpha female, not you, Tracy. She's Large Marge. That's her name. That's how inventive we are <laughs> with names around here at the zoo. That helps us to spot who the, the alpha female is, but also she is the largest, so it's a bit of me. Uh, and so the biggest meerkat there is our alpha female, and she's doing a really good job of taking care of the rest of the mob. Uh, but really, she doesn't have to do an awful lot. She's quite lazy as the alpha female. All she really has to do is look pretty. The others, they have to do the rubbish jobs, like babysitting duties or sentry duty. Uh, and if you know anything about meerkats, you'll know that sentry duty is what a meerkat's most famous for. So it's that behaviour where they will take a high stand to a high point. They'll stand on their tiptoes, little paws out in front of them, and they're looking out in the air or up in the sky or around the area for any potential threats or predators. Once they spotted one, like I mentioned, they'll let out an alarm call, and that could either be a, a high-pitched or a low bark, and that will let them know what type of threat there is and where to run for cover. So really intelligent animals here. And they're only good forage around, uh, and they're also having a little bit of a revamp of their enclosure today, so that's nice to see the ladies in here working for a change. I'm joking. <laughs> Very hard work. <laughs> I know it's going to get the death stare. I'm hiding. <laughs> and so they're doing a great job. We've got our lovely carnival keepers in here today. Uh, and we did mention there's somebody in charge, so we spotted out Maisie. Now, other than that, it's pretty difficult to tell. Oh, sorry, not Maisie, large Marge. It's pretty hard to tell who's who in here. Uh, and so I don't know if you've noticed, but they all look exactly the same. There's yeah. hardly any dimorphism between one and the other. Uh, but apparently there is a telltale sign, and it's all to do with that tail. So those tails there, each one will have a darker patch at the end of their tail, almost like they've been dipped in ink. And that is unique, apparently, to the meerkat, just like a fingerprint is unique to a human being. And so that is how we will identify them. But I have looked, I have observed, I have studied. And they still all look exactly the same to me. So uh, it is all about size in this instance. Now, we do have Lugs. Now, Lugs is a special individual because she has a bit of a birth defect. One of her ears is slightly sunken into her head more than the other one. Uh, and so it's not, you can't actually see the ear from behind her head. Uh, and she actually got her name, was it from you, Tracy? It was from Tracy, who is from Essex, am I right? Well, and Lugs is an Essex term for ears. Lugos. So there you go. That's how inventive we are with names. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Tracy will know all about what a meerkat might be like in your home, uh, or you know, not as a pet in this instance, but as uh, maybe a hand-reared animal. Uh, and how did it go, Tracy? Good or bad? Good or bad? Still just about got all my <laughs> just recovering. So this is uh, something that we do discuss during the meerkat talk because they do look very cute and cuddly. And I think us, we were all having a conversation earlier. We all agreed that they do look very cute. But somebody asked me, what is it like to cuddle one? <laughs> and I'll be honest, I've never cuddled one. <laughs> so, you know, Tracy's only got four fingers. <laughs> well, actually, it's three fingers because we've already, already got four fingers on one hand. Uh, but yeah, they are very aggressive. <laughs> and so when I asked you guys, what are your kind of describing words for a meerkat? What would you say? And I'm going to ask you in the audience if you do have any describing words. Let's get your perception of a meerkat. Any describing words? Cute. The main one. I love that one. Absolutely. And we do get that one awesome. every day as a describing word. Any other ones? Fluffy. Love that. Excellent. You didn't say fluffy, did you? Fluffy, yeah. Fluffy. <laughs> Sweet. Sweet. Okay. Nice. Nice. I like these. Uh, any others? We'll have one more. Go on, Keeper. Descriptive words. Yeah. Both were. <laughs> Within reason. <laughs> Smelly. I love that one. Aggressive, bite it. Okay, here we go. We're getting a little bit more oh, I can't realistic be now. <laughs> okay, so there we have it. So we do have a nice words usually from the audience uh, um, as a perception of a meerkat. Cute, cuddly, fluffy, those kind of things. You're not wrong. They do look like that, but they... Uh, Looks can be deceiving, okay? So they appear to be cute and cuddly, but the reality is quite different. And so you've heard a couple from our keepers there, and the, the words that we use here at Niki Zoo, the three main words that we use for a meerkat go a little like this, and you can repeat them after me if you wish. So here we go for the first word. It is social. Social. Thank you for playing along. That is great. I didn't have a tumbleweed moment. Okay, second word is aggressive. Aggressive. Oh, I like the aggressive way you said that, sir. Excellent. Okay, and the third and final word is destructive. Beautiful. Well, they're destructive. Perfect. Oh, that was a choir with harmonies in there and everything. I love that. Harmony. Thank you so much. You can come again. Okay, so social, aggressive, destructive. And just to help you guys remember these three words, when you leave the zoo today, take these words with you. The first letter of each one of those words spells out sad. Social, aggressive, destructive. S. AD. That is exactly how a meerkat would feel 
in your home as a pet. And the reason I'm talking about pets is because the new threat to a meerkat, very sadly, is the pet trade. Now they've got all of these magic, uh, amazing adaptations that they that help them survive out there in the wild. But this new threat could completely destroy a meerkat. Uh, and if we don't know anything about the husbandry and welfare of an animal, then of course they're not going to do very well in the pet trade. So because of those lovely adverts that we've all seen on telly, <laughs> the ones where meerkats are about this tall, speaking in uh, English <laughs> and wearing human clothes, Talking about car insurance, things like that, you know. <laughs> None of that is true, of course, but it has highlighted a meerkat in quite a negative way. It's now made people want a meerkat as a pet because they think they are cute and cuddly and they can speak and give you advice on car insurance. They know diddly squat, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but they now think that it might be okay to bring them in as a pet item here in the UK. So they are now a UK pet species, and I think this is horrific. Uh, so I'm going to explain why this would be a terrible idea using those three words that I shared with you earlier. So social. Does anyone Anybody remember the typical group size of a family of meerkats living out there in Africa? Audience only. <laughs> you know everything. 20 odd. Thank you, 20 odd, perfect. Thank you for listening. About 20 to 30 or 30 to 40, depending on which area you're in. So very high population numbers, as you can see, safety in numbers. How do we reckon one meerkat is gonna feel on its own without its safety in numbers, without its family members, all on its own in your house? Happy or sad? Sad. Sad, you've got it. As entertaining as interesting as you may be, guys. Uh, a meerkat just isn't gonna fit very well in your home because they are designed for the outside, for the wild, with their friends and their family members. So yeah, very, very social. Second word we used was aggressive. <laughs> okay, let's be honest. Did anybody see any arguing over food? during the feed there or was you just too interested in feeding so i will be honest every day there's a bit of nattering a bit of barking a bit of biting going on they'll also shield their area with their bums so they won't let the other meerkats get their bit of food uh, and so they can be really aggressive but did you spot their teeth while they're eating they actually protrude on the side you saw them there is one in particular who constantly has her teeth on show uh, and they are like vampire teeth they're little fangs that just protrude up the side very good reason why we don't cuddle our meerkats here at the zoo, and a very good reason why our keepers never touch these meerkats. Even if we have to take them to the vets, they will go in a carry case, they'll be led into that carry case. We won't ever try and grab them or touch them because they will attack us. And that'll be a very quick trip up to Trelisk. Uh, and of course they carry zoonotic diseases, things like that. It's not something that you would want in your home as a pet around your children. Now, what do we call a, a group of meerkats? I've used the word several times. It begins with M, ends in B. What's a group of meerkats known as? Mob. A mob, mob exactly. Yeah. Do we know what mob means? The other two words we use for a group of meerkats is gang or clan. So it's pretty self-explanatory there. You know, they have this mob mentality. Anything that lands in this enclosure that could be a potential threat to them, they will all mob it, and the last we'll see of it is being dragged down a hole. So not something you want your children to be seeing in the back garden. And the third and final word I used was destructive. Okay, that's again self-explanatory. Our keepers, they don't always come in here and make this mess. It was the meerkats initially. They dig holes all day long. It's what they're designed to do. They've actually got special adaptations to help them dig, including very long curvature claws and little nictitating membranes in their eyelids to act as a pair of goggles to help shield from all that sound. But of course, I don't know if you guys have got, you know, a great setup in your back garden, but given five minutes, they will dig their way out, no doubt. Uh, here at Nuki Zoo, we're very lucky to have an old swimming pool. So back in 1969, this used to be the penguin pool. So this is completely oh, cool. concreted right the way through and means there's no chance of escaping or digging their way out for our lovely meerkats. But of course, not very many people have a spare swimming pool or a penguin pool in their back garden. And so just don't have the setup, don't just have, don't have the means. And before they know it, the meerkats are found huddled under cars, scared and frightened, and it's not been going so well. So let's keep them in the wild where they're doing so, so well, all in protected areas like zoos, so we can learn a lot from them and observe from them. Uh, they are actually a least concerned species, so there's about 500,000 of them in the wild, I'm happy to say, and they are doing really, really well uh, as a species. So that is a little bit of hope there for our lovely meerkats. But yeah, hopefully you guys don't want, one as, want any as pets, and we can keep them being healthy. So that's just a little bit about our lovely meerkats here at Nuki Zoo. If you've awesome. got any questions whatsoever, please do ask me. I didn't talk about adaptations today, so lots more to talk about. Our next talk will be at half past two, and we're going to be having over to our African lions. Now it's a Saturday. Does it mean they're getting fed keepers? 
However, they're a little bit fussy. So when it comes to lions, funnily enough, it isn't about whether we want them to eat, it is about whether they want to eat. We can't force them to do anything. Uh, but at half past two, they should be getting uh, their lunch, so it is a planned feed day, and hopefully you guys will join me over there for a little bit of information as well. So I hope to see you awesome. there at half past two. But other than that, guys, any questions you've got, please stick around and I'll answer any at the end. And I hope you enjoy your visit here at the zoo today. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.